So I'm going to do the try not to laugh challenge conservative edition. And I know that at face value, you're probably thinking this is going to be the easiest try not to laugh challenge imaginable because conservatives aren't funny. I will be raising the stakes. If I lose, if I laugh at a single conservative clip that you all shared, there is a punishment. And I haven't talked about that yet. The punishment is actually really severe. If I lose, I have to purchase Dave Rubin's book titled Don't Burn This Book. And on top of that, if that wasn't painful enough, I have to give Dave Rubin a grifter a little bit of money. I have to read it on stream. That's the punishment. But first of all, I need to get in the laughing spirit. We're going to be watching Wendy Williams. And I know that this is played out on these streams, but uh, it makes me laugh. And I need to at least get a little bit more in the laughing mood. Okay. So it's a matter of time. She's not lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, I apologize. <laughs> Two hours later. Let the games begin! Take it away, Dave. Yoda having sex. <laughs> Thank you. You literally closing your eyes. This just makes me actually feel really sad for him and depressed. That was weird. I wasn't pretending I was Yoda. You were just shutting it down altogether. Yeah, very nice. This is my impression. It's mm. the only impression I do. I literally. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. That was close. That was really close. I totally pledge with this blood oath to dedicate my life to never picking up a dinner check, never donating to charity, and like in the glorious Soviet Union, making sure the government pays for everything. They're going so overboard. This is why conservative comedy is so bad. Why are you bogarting your stash? That is a totally false accusation. I want everyone to be as high as I am, or possibly even higher. Did I that I have a Wait, this is a real film? Wow. Yeah, there it is. I like it. And then launch my plan for Soviet-style socialists. That man is free. This is awful. So it didn't make me laugh even for being super bad, but oh my god. $20 that the Daily Wire <laughs> rated it at least an 8. Oh, they probably gave it glowing reviews. Oh my god. Yeah. Bleach in the eyes is the only thing that you can do to make yourself feel better after watching that. That was really bad. <sighs> okay. Okay. Stone facing it. Preparing myself. Let's go. This is going to be really cringeworthy, though. It's out of, and I don't know the, that you are, um, you're, I'm a married man. You're a fetching lady. I mean, especially, you know, mm. next to people like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I think, you know, it helps. <laughs> are you serious? You're doing the whole, by the way, uh, you're hot, you know, like I would, definitely would, would tap, would tap. Not, not that I'm, I'm married, of course. I mean, that's, that's basically this, what he's saying this, to this Tulsi. I, <laughs> who brought this up anyways? It was, was it, he, probably you. Yeah. And, and, but yeah. Anyways. So yeah, would, de de definitely would. So let's. Hear more about your policies, please. Helps that you're fine. I hope that doesn't offend you. <laughs> no, I'm a happily married woman. It's out of, and I don't know the, that you are. Um, you're. I'm a married man. You're a fetching lady. I mean, especially you know, next to people like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, I think you know it helps. This is having an emotional impact on me that I didn't actually anticipate. This is, this is weaponized cringe. I think that the serfs basically put it best: weaponized cringe. Ow! 
We need to end abortion. Fetuses are trespassers, idiot. We gotta like look out for each other and be generous and stuff, man. Oh, we should give churches a tax break because they help the poor. Why should my taxes pay for stupid churches? Let me just pause. All right, so it seems like they are trying to hypocrisy burn leftists. And of course, you know, this argument that they're making, uh, that they say we make, totally not a straw man, totally in, uh, in good faith. Here's the thing. Let me, let me explain to you why conservatives have to do things like this, why they have to resort to straw manning their opponents. Because if they actually engaged in good faith with our critiques of their failed policies, both social and economic policies... They lose every time because they have no facts. They don't have logic. They don't have reason. It's embarrassing. So that's why they have to create this straw man and stereotypes about leftists and then argue based off of the straw man that they created. It's honestly sad because if you truly want to convince people, this isn't the way to do it. Yeah, exactly. That's a great point, Usual Sam. This is why they talk about cancel culture, because they try to hook people in on more relatable issues. Because, you know, the average American might think, well, I don't I don't like political correctness. You know, maybe I'm not poli politically correct. I don't want to be canceled. I don't want to lose my job because I say something. Uh, so I'm against cancel culture. And so since they can't op offer any policies, any economic policies that uh, will actually improve the lives of working people or social policies, this is why they resort to things like this. Okay, how conservatives throw footballs versus how liberals throw footballs. Before I even see this, I'm just going to guess and say it's hella homophobic. How liberals throw. They're actually doing the soy boy trope. I want to die. Fuck. I don't want to feel like this. Fuck. And now, the Half Hour News Hour with Kurt McNally and Jennifer Lang. I'm Kurt McNally. And I'm Jennifer Lang. Tonight's top story, dispelling reports that she would staff her White House with longtime cronies and political appointees. Presidential candidate Hillary Clinton vowed that if she becomes president, she will surround herself with a diverse, multi-ethnic, multi-generational group of angry lesbians. <laughs> Well, as you can see, last week's tornado has moved on, and now comes the hard part, figuring out how to blame this tragedy on President Bush. Right, right. You're a liberal Democrat, a committed feminist, and you know that America is ready for a woman president. Stop, but stop, stop. This is Laura Ingram. I knew that voice sounded familiar. This is awful, by the way. This might be the worst yet. Sure that Hillary Clinton is that woman. If these symptoms sound familiar, you could be suffering from HAS, Hillary ambivalence syndrome, an anxiety disorder that affects up to one in three Democrats, which is why we developed OxyClinton. There's an insidious new ailment sweeping this country that's a threat to our very way of life. It's called muffin top. When a woman's belly fat creeps over the top of her low rise jeans. Working together, we can raise muffin top awareness and maybe someday this only happens put to an women? end to this cruel Since when? and unsightly form of disfigurement. This year, <laughs> let's make muffin top history. For Hollywood Helping Humanity, this is Lorenzo Lamas reminding you that there's no I in Hollywood. I have to stop it right there. Oh my God. How is it funny? Hey, some people get this. You ready for it? They're overweight, but I'm Okay, thank you. What's the joke? Yeah, but what is the joke here? I, I just, I don't, I am struggling to try to find out who this appeals to. This is a tough hurricane. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. Rarely have we had an experience like it, and it certainly is not good. He had this, like, weather reporter cadence about him, and I will say that he is correct. From the standpoint of water, that hurricane was one of the wettest we've ever seen. Once the media decided the Georgia voting bill was evil by demanding the same steps you'd need to get a library card, what did Major League Baseball do? They moved the game from Atlanta, which is 51% black, to Denver, which is 76% white. 
What were they smoking? <laughs> well, it is Colorado, so maybe weed. Because you got to be mile high to think this was a solution. And it's blacks who must bear the consequences, not the white CEOs. But if the new Georgia bill is truly Jim Crow on steroids and possibly growth hormone, given Major League Baseball's history, Colorado requires voter ID to vote in person. And at Coors Field, you need to show ID to pick up your tickets. Which, uh, by You want to know what else Colorado has? Mail-in voting. They have one of the highest voter turnout rates in the country. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, they were number two. So it is not more difficult to vote. So this is disingenuity. It's stupidity. It's ignorance. I, it's not comedy. <laughs> That's what it is. I'll tell you that. I'm just curious. Who doesn't have an ID? And if the person doesn't have an ID, don't you think voting isn't really a primary concern? <laughs> Given that it's impossible to rent an apartment, get a bank account, or sign up for my new newsletter on the benefits of gold and... I'm sorry, I have to pause it again. Yes, voting is a primary concern. If you want democracy to actually exist, you have to enable people the ability to vote. Is he really asking that question? And lots of folks don't have IDs and they'll lie. They'll say, well, you know what? Just get an ID. They're free in the state of Georgia. Oh, really? Okay, well, how much does it cost to get the documents needed to get the ID? Are, the, are those free? Is that process free? To acquire the documents that I don't have to get a free ID in Georgia, that also costs money. Such a disingenuous prick. We went to CNN for comment. This is the most racist panel I have ever been on. Racist, you racist, racist, white, racist, 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 white racist, male baseball racist. 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 I'm so sorry. I have to pause it again. This is a multi-billion dollar company. They couldn't put any more effort into the graphics to make it look more like CNN. On my YouTube show, I put more effort in. They can't do anything more. Just a couple of people in front of a green screen. And this basic graphic right here, they can't do anything more. This is what Fox News is, is producing. And over at MSNBC, what does Brian Williams have to say about all this? I am the greatest professional baseball player that has ever lived. And I'm going to be watching. we got to follow the rules. Come on, come on, man. This isn't politics. All right? If we all do our part, we can all be watching the Super Bowl together on Labor Day, Memorial Day. Uh, it, the one of the days. <laughs> so, all you woke company. I'm sorry. There's so much that you can make fun of Joe Biden over. He's a walking meme. That was bad. That's your best effort? Oh my god. This is so embarrassing. And his delivery is so cringeworthy as well, I've just got to say, because he's trying to, like, really deliver and get that comedian cadence. You can tell he really wants to be Jon Stewart, but this is awful. If bogus claims of racism are now your all-star players, maybe treat them like starting pictures and give them a few days rest. Fuck. Fuck. So far, it's looking really good for me. Two votes for no, two votes for no. All right, I, I respect your opinion. Folks, this is pretty decisive. We have to stop the steal, folks. We're gating the chat. <laughs> I, I, I think we can pound the gavel, right? I think I won that. Uh, pretend I have a sound effect where it's a like an applause or some shit like that. I, you know, I could. I have a, I have a stream deck. I could uh, add that. Uh, just don't read Dave Rubin's book, but stop the steal. <laughs> we still haven't counted the mail-in ballots. This could be a red mirage. Uh, I didn't laugh at these conservative clips, but I, I did kind of cringe and uh, my soul died. But hopefully everyone enjoyed and were able to laugh through the cringe. Ideas. 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 Ideas.